here we are in the middle of Loch Corrib on Inchigeel Island. Noel and I have been camping here for the last two nights and it's the most beautiful place. It's ancient. You have two beautiful ancient churches dating back to the 12th century. We were fishing yesterday with Frank. This is Frank Riley. Great. Nice to see you Frank. And uh, we had some fantastic sport. So Frank is a member of Inland Fisheries Ireland and he is also a member of Abgai Ireland and he is fly dresser and a, a single-handed casting instructor. But Frank, you've been guiding on this lake for many years now. Yeah, I am. You know, over the last 20 years, uh, I do it on a very part-time basis. I uh, take people out from basically all over the world and introduce them to different methods of wrangling on the corrib and introduce them to the corrib in some places. Yeah. And it's such a, such a vast lake and there's so many different parts of it. And you were telling us yesterday that different parts of it fishes, fishes well at different times of the year and you call them different seasons. Yeah. Um, what, what, I, what I try to do is follow the season because Corb is such a large lake, large lake 44,000 acres. Um, it has its own, it, it, it has a large amount of seasons. Uh, what I mean is different fly hatches right throughout the year. And depths change and uh, the environment changes. So sometimes you have a particular hatch maybe at the beginning of a month. And if you move to a different location in the lake, that could be three, maybe two weeks behind. So we follow the hatches uh, and that follows the fish. And Frank, yesterday we went wet fly fishing and we had good sport and we had lots of fish take and we had a few fish and it was great fun. But you then changed to the dry fly and I was surprised because you know I'm not used to fishing the lakes, Frank. And what I was surprised by was that I didn't see any, any flies hatching and I didn't see any fish rising. But, um, but you know, you put us in this method and well, it worked very well and I had a beautiful fish on it. So can you explain the two methods that you use in the lake? Yeah, uh, well, the, the first method is um, wet fly fishing. Uh, the first thing is, I suppose we should say, like the, that angling methods have changed a lot, even in my lifetime. And the techniques that we use have changed a lot. The equipment that's available to us has also improved. So, uh, we're very lucky to, to live in this area because we have such a range of quality materials. Uh, the wet fly fishing traditional, the, the, I call it traditional, although I suppose it, it, it's, there's a modern angle to it as well. Um, what we're using is we're using different types of uh, intermediate lines or maybe a, um, an intermediate tip uh, when we're pulling wets at this time of year. And what we're doing, what we look for is that because because one of the things that has changed is, is the clarity of the water, mm -hmm. because we have a zebra mussel in the lake now. Uh, so the clarity uh, makes, it gives the advantage to the trout. So we, had to, we have to overcome that. The second thing I suppose that has changed is that there is a considerable amount of angling pressure on the lake. And because the techniques have improved, uh, angling skills have also improved. So the method I recommend, the method I use is a wet fly to eat our flies. Uh, my leader will be about 20 foot long. Mm -hmm. uh, I will start at the fly line and I will add up, uh, probably an 8 or 10 pound 5 foot uh, leader, piece of leader. Then I'll attach my, the rest of my leader 15 foot long. To okay. So that pushes my top dropper. 10 foot away from the that, That's just reducing the scoop element for the fish with the fish taken. And then you, will you tr traditionally fish two flies or three flies, Frank? Uh, we would fish three flies and there then what's important is once you get the, the, the setup right, what's important then is, is what, what I talk about turnover. That when you cast your line out, that the fly ends up at, at, at the furthest point of your cast. And once you can achieve that, the next most important thing is movement straight away. Um, the most likely time for a take is on the first three pulls. Or just yeah. as you and we know. discovered that yesterday yeah. as well. Yeah. So the turnover is very important. And Frank, you must see yourself like, like you have all different um, types of anglers who come to you. Some are very recreational anglers who, anglers who only might fish once or twice a year. And is this sometimes quite a challenge to get them to turn over such a long leader? It, it, it can be a challenge, but it's a challenge I welcome and, and uh, thankfully I'm, I, as you said, Linda, a qualified instructor. So that gives me an advantage in that I can explain what, I, what I'm looking for the angler to do, I can demonstrate it, 
and of the teacher. So, uh, you know, it's not just taking people out of the lake, yes. it's the whole thing. We, we, we'll get the cast right, and we, we'll get it right. And uh, overall, things are really winners, and we have to think that they've achieved that and caught a fish. Yeah. You said something lovely yesterday, Frank. You said that we're searching for the fish, and the fish are searching for us, and all we have to do is meet. Yeah. And I thought it was the most yeah. beautiful statement, yeah. and it's true. It is. So, Frank, what really impressed me yesterday was the dry fly fishing. I really, really enjoyed it. I love sitting watching the fly in the water. With, it takes, it's quite exhausting actually. I slept like a log last night in the tent. Um, the level of concentration is, is quite something. So, can you tell me about the setup that you use for the dry fly fishing on Corrib? Yeah, um, well, here we're, we're using a, um, a shorter rod. With the wet fly rod, we're usually somewhere between 10 and 11 foot. But with the dry fly rod, we fall back to, to 9 and 10 foot. Um, we're using a float line and again uh, we're pushing the, the fly as far away from the fly line as possible. The, the important things about it are uh, what, what method I, I prefer to use and I found over the years that in a wave we're actually better off to fish a single fly uh, because if you fish two the wave is, is pulling them against each other and we're not getting them to present properly. Uh, and then uh, in, in light winds or calm conditions, uh, I, I go to two fly setup. So from the fly line then to the to the first fly, uh, if we're talking about a two fly team, I'm looking at 10 foot. Again, I'm tapering down. I'm, I'm going from maybe I'm tapering down from six pounds to maybe four pounds, five pounds, uh, and then uh, introducing my first crop of it. I'm pushing the next fly down, maybe five, six foot away. It's all a matter of taper, light lever. Uh, and then the, the important things are what the, 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 the material that we use. And I have found that the fluorocarbon overall is the best, it gives us the best result. But we have to, um, I use fuller's earth just to decrease the, the leader material. Uh, it helps to take the shine out of the and then we just use gink or, or some type of floating to, to keep the fly uh, sitting on top of the water. Single fly setup, um, I'd be looking for uh, 20 foot as well. Uh, so I'm tapering down and looking to have that fly 20 foot away from the, um, from the fly. And of course when the fly sinks then we dry it by either a applying more, more gink or, or we can dry it in the air? Yeah, well, well what we, there's a few things we can do. We can dry it off using different materials mm -hmm. uh, or we can use a, a powder, a silicone powder, which will help to dry it off, or, or false cast. Uh, I prefer to go false cast uh, is always my first option and until that doesn't work I won't fall to any difference. Okay, and so Frank, Yesterday, whenever we were we were fishing, um, you were explaining that you've gone right down to a five weight rod um, at times yeah. for, for dry fly fishing. Yeah. And many years ago, that wouldn't really have been heard of in the law, no. would it? No, and we've even gone to four weights. Um, yes. A friend of mine, now my a good friend of mine, is now fishing four weight all the time in dry. I'm changing. I'm fishing four or fives. Uh, the reason is very simple. Um, we have to use finer material, which means. Uh, the breaking strength isn't as high. Yes. So to combat that, because they because they were fishing for wild brown trout uh, of any size, you, you never know. That's the beauty of the carp. Mm -hmm. You never know what size the fish is going to be. Uh, we have to be able to compensate uh, for that take. So the easiest way to compensate is drop your rod weight, look for a softer rod. And that allows us then to use lighter material. So Frank, we're about to head out again today. So yeah. tell me, what are the conditions like for, for fishing on the on the loch today? Yeah, today is a lovely day. Uh, today is a day uh, I suppose I dream about yeah. <laughs> all the time. Uh, we've got got a nice westerly wind. Uh, we've overcast uh, and, and it's warm. Um, I I know from experience what flies we're going to like. There's going to be plenty of mayflies hatching. There's going to be sedges hatching. Uh, although. We may not see the fish rising, and uh, they will be hunting, uh, and hopefully we'll have some success. I think today will be a good day for us, Linda. 
Great, thanks. So thank you very much. I'm going to go up and get get togged out, and we'll head out to the boat. Okay, thank you. So Frank, this dry fly fishing is great fun, isn't it? You can't even take your eyes off the flies. Yeah. I can't even look at you whenever I'm talking to you, but it's something that you, you really love, guys, and I, I can see it. I mean, I know that, that you're watching the flies with me here as I'm fishing. Yeah, um, yeah, I do love it. I love I love the whole thing you've been on the water. Uh, I love watching you fishing. Uh, what I do watch the flies with you. I'm fishing every cast with you. Uh, I try to help you and advise you and guide you through it. Uh, but we're basically one unit. Um, I, for me, it's it's in my blood. I think uh, I just enjoy being on the water, meeting new people, and, and watching them catch catch a trout or a few trout. And you have people coming out with you from all over the world as well, don't you, Frank? Yeah, we have people from all over the world coming to coming to La Park to fish. Mm -hmm. um, it's a unique body of water, mm -hmm. uh, and we've been fishing for a wild brown trout. Too. And Frank, this is something that I know you've done for many many years. But is it something that you'd like to do more of in the future? Yeah, it is. Yeah, just to get out there with more people and because I really enjoy doing it. Yeah, but you can see that, Frank. You're very good at it. You're very attentive. It's been great fun out here the last couple of days. Even though we are maybe striking a little bit too fast for your liking. Yeah, sometimes, but uh, no two fish will take the same way either, no. Linda. Uh, then, you know, they'll really play games with us. You'll have the, the slow take. The, the subtle take, you know, the aggressive take, and then you left the one and you just zoned out and enjoying the day. <laughs> so it's different all. Well, thank you, Frank. It's been a great opportunity for us to be out here. And we're absolutely loving the peace and quietness on the island. It's just super. Yeah, it's been a pleasure for me. Thank you.